Today I'm going to show you a basic practical setup for any three-channel color camera that you can do to fix a problem like you see on this monitor. You can also use it as a daily routine setup or a weekly routine setup for any of your studio cameras or field cameras. You see that on the screen it's obvious that it has a very red tint. And when, generally when you look at a, at a picture like this, it's sometimes difficult to figure out whether the problem is in the whites or the blacks. The way we can figure that out is by using an extremely high quality test chart with our camera. And the test chart will reveal the errors that we see, but not by looking at it as a picture, but by looking at it on a waveform monitor and a vector scope. So what the plan is to produce a, ca a camera that is completely black balanced and white balanced so that all of the proper colors will be created and that you'll be able to mix it with other cameras that are also properly balanced. The first step in this process is to iris the camera to black. Now why would I suggest that we iris the camera to black? Think of a a, a camera picture as in the same way that you'd think of a building. If you're going to build a building, it has to have a uniform solid basement or platform or slab. If you don't have that, the rest of the building will be sideways canted, never have any straight corners. This, in the same way, unless the black values in a camera are balanced, the other colors, the other white values won't even track properly. So the first thing we do is to look at the blacks only and the way to do that is iris the camera down so that all I'm seeing is the black values. In order to do that I will watch the two things. I will watch the red, green, blue displays on a sequential display and I'll look at the spearhead on top. I can see right now that right now the red channel and the blue channel are elevated and I can see some vestige of that displacement on the spearhead since the head of that spear is not at the base of the, the bottom of the, of the vertical axis. So the first thing I will do is adjust the blue channel down so it meets the baseline on the RGB and you'll notice however, that I not only can tell that the camera is not black balanced because of the RGB, but because the head of the spear hasn't moved on the spearhead. If I simply now move the black value in the red channel, you'll see that for, for, for starters, the red-black comes to the baseline in the RGB display, but it also immediately goes to the bottom of the vertical axis and you have a dot at the center. Now you've established the first point in the, in the succession of grayscale steps that you'll eventually see as a straight line. But is that a straight line at this point? No, it really isn't. And second thing I will do is I want to examine the condition of the, the, the white balance of the camera. And when I do that, as in no matter what camera you use, we generally use the green channel as a reference and the iris to pull the level up to that 100% or 700 millivolt level. And immediately I see that the red channel is high and the blue channel is low. But the other way I can see that is on the vector display on the spearhead. You'll notice that that the line that's represented by those, the, all of the dots that represent the grayscale is canted to the right off the vertical axis. So I have confirmation that's the value of a high quality waveform monitor. I can see it with my eye, I can see it on an RGB, and I can see it even more precisely on the spearhead. So what I will do in this case is simply move the blue gain for course purposes on the RGB display, observing that to the 100% level, but you'll notice that, in fact, 
the vertical line, the, the line that's supposed to be vertical on the spearhead, hasn't moved very much closer to the vertical axis. So I know that I have some more work to do in the red, in the, in the red white channel. I will then, seeing that it is too high in the RGB display, dial that down until I see it just touch the top point of the, on the vertical axis. In other words, the top dot meets the top axis. Now, theoretically, if I followed the, the normal notion that I'd done a black and white balance, I should be done, but I'm not. And here's why. You'll see that in the first place, if you look at the black levels, using this chip, the blacker than black chip as a reference, as it's displayed in the waveform monitor, that chip is here where it belongs. The chip over here in the, in the blue channel seems to be right, but that blue chip is actually suppressed. It's compressed at the baseline. That will alter the chromatic characteristics of the camera pretty badly, so I want to fix that. Well, where does that problem derive from? Is it an electrical problem? No, it's, it's, a, it's a normal vestige of having a lens on a camera, and not all lenses transmit all of the values in exactly the same way. Because what happens inside a lens is the light will bounce around a little bit within the optical path, and that bounce within the optical path inside the barrel of the lens will produce a black lift in an individual color channel or multiple color channels. So the first thing I want to do is fix that. Now, how do I fix that? Every camera has a control in it called flare compensation, an electrical offset to the black level. What I'm going to do here is establish a camera condition which replicates that bounce even more, exaggerates it, so that I can precisely adjust that flare control to, to fix this problem in the video waveform. So I will overexpose the camera by anywhere between one and one and a half stops. And now you'll see that I can, as I make this adjustment, you'll be able to see when I adjust the flare controls that I can actually move those black values around, but not using the black level, but using the flare control. And if you look at the bottom side of the spearhead, you'll see that when I, as I move them, I'm slowly moving those black levels back toward the vertical center line, which I, needed, which I need to do because of that aberration. I just moved the blue, but the red is where the most of the problem is. So I will dial that, that compensation level so that it brings the black level up. And you'll see that now all of those dots on the left edge of the spearhead are in a vertical line. So now what I've got, what I think is what I think a perfectly white balanced camera under any lighting condition. I can verify that by irising the camera down to zero, touching up the master black level, and then touching up the black level slightly because the flare control and the black control do interact slightly, and then iris the camera up to that one and a half stops over point, and then I may have to touch up the flares slightly, but in fact they're so close that I see that I'm, I'm done with that, so I'll iris the camera to the hundred percent point. Now, as a final verification in this process, if you observe the line of vertical dots that range from peak white to black on that vertical axis on the spearhead, as I iris down, watch the white point and the black point, and you'll see that there's no horizontal displacement in those values as I move the iris up and down. Everything stays in line, and that those series of dots just compress on themselves. As I iris up, they do exactly the same thing. What are the implications of having done that? Because this is the, this is the end of a, the basic setup. Now, what does that mean to you? That means that if you take this camera out into the real world and you need to shoot around different scenes, and some of the scenes 
contain values in the sky and some of the values are in shadow, even if you pan over with your talent, for instance, in the frame, with the sun behind them, the black levels won't change, so there'll be no contaminations in the black. The, whites will be, the white levels will be the same because we've set those values and we've compensated for any small changes that the lens might have introduced. And we can therefore not only produce a full range of colors accurately, but we can do it under a full range of lighting conditions from very bright to, ver to fairly dark. And that is a very, the, the basics of a simple black and white setup. This setup is the foundation for any further setup you do from now on. In fact, you should never ever attempt to do any of the, the more complex settings such as gamma or matrix or knees or toes or black gamma until you've done this basic setup because this is the foundation that will make all of those other parameters work and allow you to do all of the complex things you can do in a camera.